There's two things I can't stand around here, and that's the way things are and change. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. It's Monday, the 7th of February, and today the pilots of Spirit Airlines and Frontier Airlines are waking up to the news that they are about to merge. If there's one thing that airline pilots have virtually no control over during their airline pilot career, that is mergers and acquisitions. There's only one thing that matters in an airline pilot's career, and that is seniority. That seniority is based on how old you were and the day you were hired, how old you were on the day that you were hired. And that date that you were hired determines your overall pilot seniority at that one airline. There is no national seniority list that encompasses all the airline pilots in the United States. It only matters the date that you got hired at the one airline that you got hired on with. Once you change airlines, you lose all that seniority and that seniority goes down to zero. You start all over. During airline mergers, these seniority numbers come into play and by the time all the dust is settled, it's not considered a successful merger until everybody is equally upset about the results of the seniority merge. The deal that was announced in the news today claimed that Frontier Airlines will be buying Spirit Airlines for $2.9 billion in cash and stock. The overall deal valued at somewhere around $6 billion. Now, according to CNBC, this gives the Denver-based Frontier Airlines a 51.5% controlling interest in the merge. And if you happen to own Spirit Airlines stock, Spirit investors will be receiving 1.9 shares of Frontier stock plus $2.13 for each share owned, giving you a value now for Spirit stocks of 25 bucks a share, which is a 19% premium over the value that they were just last week. As an airline pilot, I'd say, sell, sell, sell. So this merger, if approved by regulators, and I suppose it probably will, the Biden administration doesn't like the idea of making these companies too big, but he'll probably poo-poo the idea. But in the end, I suspect this deal will be approved. This will make uh, this merged airline the fifth largest airline in the U.S. per capita share. Right now, how do we stand? American Airlines, 18.5% of the market share is number one. Remember, American Airlines merged with U.S. Air. Southwest Airlines is number two at 17.7%. South, Southwest Airlines has pretty much been on their own, but they did do a little dance with uh, AirTran, giving them the Hawaii routes, and otherwise have been just growing internally. Delta Airlines is number three at 16.3% of the market share, and they merged uh, with Northwest Airlines, the, their most recent merge. United Airlines is a surprising number four at just 12.7%, and of course they had the big merger with Continental Airlines. Then we get the smattering of smaller airlines, and as it stood, this is as of October of 2021, Alaska Airlines at 5.3%, JetBlue at 5.3%. Remember JetBlue merged recently the most recent merger, 2016, with uh, Virgin USA. Spirit Airlines at 5.3%, SkyWest at 3.5%, Frontier at 34 and Hawaiian at 1.6%. So when Spirit and Frontier get together, that puts them in the fifth position. So what does this merger mean for the consumer? Well, it means less choice in low-cost carriers, but it also adds increased um, stability in the low-cost carrier marketplace as frequently these low-cost carriers are teetering on the edge of bankruptcy even more so than the major airlines. But these low-cost carriers are important because they keep ticket pricing in check at the big four airlines. Now having been through these mergers before I take these statements from the CEOs with a grain of salt and here the Frontier at Frontier Airlines they're saying that this merger will save save us one billion dollars annually in the merger without layoffs. No, that rarely ever happens. You can't put two and two together, have the redundancies, and 
without some layoffs. There's going to be overlap in management and temporarily in the employee ranks until they get the merger together. More on that in a minute. They also said they expect to hire 10,000 workers by 2026 and add to their combined 15,000 employees currently. One of the major things that's driving this merger right now is the incredible pilot shortage that we have. This is a kind of a quick fix to a pilot shortage, especially at these lower cost carriers where the pay is less and the turnover rate is higher amongst the pilots. By putting these two airlines together, that should get them enough pilots for the next couple of years to run the operation. Though these two airlines have announced this merger, they have yet to announce what airline is going to be called, who's going to manage the airline, and where is this airline going to be based. Well, this will all uh, be, their hand will be forced by the process that the FAA will put them through in order to achieve a common operating certificate. Each airline has its own separate operating certificate. And when you merge two airlines, you're merging two corporate cultures together, and those two corporate cultures are manifested legally through the operating certificate of the airline, how they do business, how you train your pilots, how you schedule your pilots. Everything about your way of life as a pilot is determined through this operating certificate. And so there will be a several year process. It's a six phase process and the FAA is very familiar with this process that these two airlines will have to go through and you're going to have to get some people to help manage this process and go through the six steps to merge into one common operating certificate for the merged airline. And that process will take about two years. A couple of things about this merger that kind of makes sense is both airlines are Airbus airlines. They both operate fleets of Airbus A320 and 321 and 319 aircraft. That is a common type certificate. So there is a commonality of training and there's a commonality of job expectations, if you will. There's no wide dispersion of wide body aircraft, which pay substantially more versus narrow body aircraft. So that part should be relatively simple. Another plus in this merger is that both pilots unions are represented by the same union, the Airline Pilots Association. So hopefully both groups will be equally disappointed by the resulting seniority merge. So that's how these mergers kind of go together. For a pilot, it's a very sudden news event. These events are usually kept pretty quiet because there's a lot of money involved as we talked about those shareholders and the kind of deals that are happening with the money there. And um, so quite suddenly you wake up one day and you look on the news and bam, we're merging. What is gonna happen to my career? What's gonna happen to my seniority? It's gonna get sorted out. Everybody will be equally disappointed. Just please remain professional in the cockpit because the first thing you do when you get to work is everybody starts yammering on about the merger and uh, <laughs> you want to respect the uh, sterile cockpit below 10,000 feet. You're going to see an uptick in ASAP reports. This is how stupid things happen like tow bars failing to get disconnected before the aircraft taxis or taking off without a takeoff clearance. People are distracted. This is a huge distraction into the cockpit. It happens every time. Stay professional, file those ASAP reports, be careful, and I want to hear from you Airbus and Spirit, or correction, uh, Spirit Airlines and Frontier Airlines pilots, how you think this merger is going to play out. Keep it civil in the comment section. These kind of mergers can raise a lot of ire, hate, and discontent. They don't need to. Thanks so much for your support, especially over on Patreon that makes this content possible. We'll see you here.